Hello, and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host, Mitchell J. Rabin, and we're very glad that you're joining us again today. Today, we're going to have another very interesting show. We have seated in our studio today, Gil Carmichael, who is the Executive Director of Radio for Peace International. Many of you have heard me speak about RFPI over the past couple of years because I am a great supporter and advocate of RFPI. I consider it to be the voice of conscience of the world over radio. Like WBAI that serves New York, RFPI actually serves the world. It's a shortwave radio station broadcast out of Costa Rica that has been on the air since approximately 1987. And they've been serving a very high level of purpose in our world. We're very glad to have Gil on the show with us today who has taken it by the rein, so to speak, and is bringing RFPI, Radio for Peace International, to yet its next level for people all over to enjoy, appreciate, and to spread awareness of issues taking place in our world that are very much important for everybody to know about and often to take action about. Thank you, Mitchell. I'm glad to be on the program today. It's my pleasure to have you, Gil. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. So when did you first yourself get involved with RFPI? Actually, uh, I've been involved uh, for about two and a half years, not directly, but indirectly through uh, my wife's work. She produces and broadcasts uh, A Woman's Voice as well as uh, In the Moment, two programs on RFPI. I came on board last year uh, full-time to work as the development director and to head up the development department. So, Fabulous. Now, since you've gotten on Gill, mm -hmm. there's been a whole new energy and dynamic building at our FPI, which has really excited those of us who have been also part of it for some time. Mm -hmm. You're bringing a new wave of excitement and commitment, I feel, to the station and more than anything to its getting spread and known mm -hmm. really internationally. Mm -hmm. Could you speak a little bit about what it is you're doing and what it is you're trying to broadcast out, if you will, sure, to the sure. world? Um, as you mentioned, Mitch, uh, we broadcast from Costa Rica to 120 countries worldwide with an approximate listenership of about 800,000 people. Mm. Now, when we talk about the new energy, we, we've really looked uh, in the last six or seven months at what the original mission was of RFPI. And basically, we are the defender of truth, the uh, uh, champion of human rights, the environment, and the message of peace. So, Denouncer of hatred. And denouncer <laughs> of hatred, right, exactly. And injustice. And exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so taking those things into consideration, uh, we've really redefined our broadcasting and our outreach so that it fits into those areas more specifically and mm -hmm. directly. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. Now, you have been talking to me uh -huh. in your stay here in New York, Gil, you and Deborah Latham, who's the general manager of RFPI and has been, actually is one of the co-founders and has been hands-on with James, her husband, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. They really gave birth to RFPI. Mm -hmm. So the rest of us can come and join along the way and yes. participate. Uh, there are a few issues that you feel are particularly salient in the world these days that just altogether too few people know about. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is the issue of women and the slave trade, actually, mm -hmm. which Absolutely. we would have really hoped and prayed would have been long in our in our past mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is not. No, it's, it's very not. present. In fact, uh, Could you speak to that for uh, our audience? Yes, of course. The, the international trafficking of women and children for the purposes of prostitution is a bigger problem now than it's ever been in recorded history. Uh, this is a problem that uh, that formerly was isolated to uh, the subcontinent, parts of Asia, 
and parts of Africa. It is now, with the breakup of the Soviet Union and these Eastern Bloc countries that were form formerly Soviet states, mm -hmm. uh, it has spread uh, to all of those areas. And we see uh, a tremendous problem with the uh, international tra trade of women and children for the purposes of prostitution. Uh, would you like me to elaborate a little bit on oh, how would. that works? How it works, and, and give me some idea of the uh, proportions involved. Sure. Um, it's an international problem that affects millions of women uh, and children. The end users of these human beings are pimps and uh, Johns, sometimes uh, pedophiles, in the United States, Europe, and Japan, the developing world. Many times... Oh, uh, the so-called civilized world. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, the developed world, mm -hmm, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, it's the developed world exploiting the undeveloped world. And uh, uh, the way it works... These it, words have to be used so guardedly, you know, Gil? Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Who actually is developing? Yeah. And what are they developing? And exactly. What have we said that we've developed? Right, exactly, exactly. Um, the, uh, the, the way it generally works is a woman will see an advertisement in a newspaper to be a cultural dancer or to get a job outside of her impoverished country. So she'll go and talk to a trafficker who will promise this work, supply false papers, and actually transport the woman into the United States, Europe, or Japan under those auspices. When mm. the woman arrives in the destination, she finds out that she owes an unpayable debt, a debt of thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars to the trafficker for uh, arranging the, the papers, the papers, and the illegal transportation. And it's that at that point that she's told that she has to have sex with as many as fifteen to twenty men a day uh, to credit her account ten dollars per man until the debt is paid off. If at that time she's unwilling to participate, she's generally tortured and beaten until uh, and raped until she submits to uh, working as a prostitute. Uh, a woman may work for years to pay off this debt, and if she lives long enough to pay off the debt, doesn't contract AIDS or or some other tremendous health problem and gets the debt close to being paid off, the brothel owner will then sell her to another brothel owner or move her and the debt will start over. So it's an unpayable debt and it is, uh, it is Prostitu it is slavery and the slavery is for the purpose of prostitution. So it's a tremendous problem. There are other ways that this works too, Mitchell. Um, uh, many uh, families in India sell their daughters because they feel that there'll be a better life for them outside of the family. Uh, what we are doing and wish to expand on at Radio for Peace International is to inform people about the traffickers, these ads, uh, tell people in their native languages how to identify uh, people who could entrap them into this type of activity and also inform people in India, the subcontinent, uh, Bangladesh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, on how to access programs that will allow them to keep their families together. Uh, for example, there's a, a program called Heifer which uh, if, if a family signs a contract sure. uh, to keep their family together, they'll get a cow. And if they get a cow, they have enough income, the cow will produce enough uh, goods to sell sure. so the family doesn't have to sell their daughter. So they don't feel that they have to sell right. in order to have exactly. some money. Exactly, exactly. We've Be had people on before, Gil, speaking about this slave trade, especially when it comes to these little girls, or mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. 10, 12, 14 mm -hmm. year old girls yep. who all over India, and actually Nepal, 
-hmm. they sell these children to these uh, these middlemen. Mm -hmm. These middlemen, actually, I'm sorry, buy the children right. for I'm talking forty to seventy five dollars. Yes, uh -huh. and then put them into the prostitution rings mm -hmm, in India mm -hmm. and utterly abuse them. I mean, oh, of course, just and so pathetic. We have we have stories of uh, girls uh, being uh, mutilated by having brooms put into their vaginas and beat. Uh, uh, right now, uh, I'm sure you know, Mitchell. There's there's tens of thousands of little girls that are sold in Bombay in zoo-like cages on the street uh, through these middlemen to uh, to people who put them into to brothels uh, sure. throughout throughout uh, India sure. and the developed sure. world. Now, what do you see as you began to speak about the role of Radio for Peace vis-a-vis -vis this problem sure. and, in fact, many other very pressing problems sure. that we have in the domain of human rights such as of this course. and uh, also environmental mm -hmm, problems mm -hmm. as well. Well, let me let me address the uh, the issue that we're we're talking about right now and that's the uh, uh, the enslavement of people for the purpose of prostitution. Yes. Uh, generally um, the the uh, the way that we work is to inform people in their native language about how to access programs so they don't become victims of this problem. Alternatives. The, it's, it's wonderful that the mainstream medium is picking up uh, stories about this issue. And we're seeing 20-minute spots. I understand there was a 60-minute uh, oh, yes. program uh, a couple just of days recently. ago, just recently, that talked about uh, this problem as it relates to Italy being the I end user of, of women Correct. from the Eastern Bloc. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good that there's this awareness. With our radio station, we, with our new Human Rights Channel, are going to be broadcasting 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, the information that people need to access so that they don't become victims of slavery and prostitution. And working from the ground up, using a grassroots approach, and informing people in la in the language that they How speak. How are you going to do that if you're dealing with like the hundreds of languages, for instance, sure. in India alone? Right. Well, we're going to broadcast in several of the of the main languages: Telugu, uh, English, of course, and uh, and then we're Hindi. going to Hindi, of course, and then we're going to uh, to ask people to spread the word and and let it evolve. Uh, furthermore, it's we're... It's quite a task. Oh, it is. It is. Quite However, with this medium, we can cover a tremendous amount of ground very cost-effectively. It's very inexpensive to use shortwave, which is the medium of choice in those areas. Exactly. Actually, so worldwide, there's more. There are more people who listen to shortwave than any other medium. Th there in are radio. In radio. Isn't that's, that correct? That's correct. Yes. Uh, French Telecom just uh, did a report in January of 2001 that says there's 2.5 billion shortwave receivers on the face of this earth. At any one given time, 200 million people will have shortwave receivers turned on. So. <laughs> So it's a it's a so how do you come course. up with the number Gil of eight hundred thousand of RFPI listeners? Sure, I, uh, based on a percentage, and this is all done through demographics and and yeah. uh, I can't tell you the you hire the CBS form. to do this. Is yeah, that right? right. No, we don't. <laughs> but uh, but uh, based on <laughs> where we go and a percentage of the population of that area, they that's how they calculate the the number. I see. It's still, it's a huge number of people. It is a huge number of, reaching. number of people, it's yes. Right. And, you know, just a word on the issues underlying what you're talking about and the problem. I mean, honestly, it, it looks like it's a problem of economics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in some cases, no doubt, mm -hmm, it is. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. However, it seems to me that there are some underlying psychological issues at play having to do on a very root level 
of the relationship of men to women. Oh, without and question. And power issues. Without and, question. And uh, recently at the UN at Earth Day, I uh, met a woman from UNICEF, regional director at one point of the Pacific Rim, Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. who did an immense study and uh, wrote a book, Breaking the Earthenware Jar, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is an analysis of the violence that takes place against women sure. and girls, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially in Southeast Asia. And of is, course. It is formidable. Sure. And often it's not about economics at all. Well, uh, some, uh, many times it's not. And we, when we talk about the issue of female genital mutilation, which right. is a growing problem, it used to be isolated to a few countries in Africa, and it was perpetuated through tradition that w went on for hundreds of years, many, many, many <laughs> generations. What we see now is female genital mutilation is spreading, and it's spreading throughout the Muslim world into Arab countries where the practice was never used before. Mm. It has gone, actually... So it went from African Muslim nations, now you're saying to the Arabic. Exa exactly. Yeah. And uh, we now have 33 nations that practice this hideous torture, which is, is solely and exclusively so that men can control women. I mean, that's... And their sex drives, etc. Of course, of course. Uh, 130 little girls and young women are affected by this mutilation in this world right now. 133 million. 130 million uh, girls and young women are affected. So it's a Are these sanctioned by the governments, those governments you refer to? Uh, uh, some. Sometimes uh, they're supported by the government. Sometimes it's underground. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's never talked about, but it's out there. In any event, it goes on. It right. goes on. And right. Radio for Peace International is working at being a voice to notify, to right. advise people sure. about these insane, insane primitive sure. practices exactly. that are taking place in the 21st century. Right, right. And this is the power of RFPI. Indeed, yes. And how much does it cost for a shortwave radio? Well, on I, average, we uh, an average uh, shortwave radio, especially in the developing world, uh, is probably $60 new. And many times, uh, several families or a group will exactly. share the cost. Sure. Of a, Villages, a towns, right. small communities. And, and this this uh, type of radio has been around for so many years. Oh yeah. That people hand down their radios from f family members to family sure, members, sure, and sure. so many people have the same radio that their grandfathers bought. Uh, incredible. You know, back in the 1950s. <laughs> so. <laughs> Right. So uh, a family heirloom. Yeah, exactly. In fact, exactly. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and you've also done and have always done a lot having to do with environmental justice as well. Yes, it, the rape goes from women to Mother Earth herself. Right, exactly. It just continues, right. and for many reasons, economic and others. Mm -hmm, again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have a proliferation of environmental injustice yes. from the use of non-renewable resources, mm -hmm. the oil industry, mm -hmm. which continues to rape, plunder, and pillage our beautiful planet, to virtually every other pharmaceutical, mm -hmm. chemical industries, pesticides, right. herbicides, insecticides, exactly. just literally destroying the quality of our air, our soil, and our water. Sure. What is the role that RFPI well, has been playing? Well, let me, uh, we, we play a, a big role because we've, we've been constantly broadcasting environmental awareness issues and programs for about 14 years. But I want to isolate one particular issue right now that is, is real important that we discuss, and I, I want the people here in New York to, uh, to know about this. Mm -hmm. and that, that's the war on drugs, which is being waged primarily in Colombia right now. And, uh, and it doesn't look like an environmental issue at all. It doesn't all. look like an environmental issue, However, but it is a major environmental issue from, from three different areas. Number one, the, the cause of the environmental problem is the spraying of uh, defoliants to eradicate the coca production. Well, in doing so, the groundwater has become poisoned and toxic in 
large areas of the country. So they use DDT? Uh, I can't tell you what the uh, chemical composition or the name mm -hmm. is, but, uh, but it's very toxic. And uh, this toxicity goes into the groundwater, into the farm animals, into the children. And in certain indi indigenous villages, 80% of the children have skin lesions and boils visible on their skin from drinking the water. And, uh, and it's a major, major problem uh, environmentally. Further, as this defoliation occurs, Mitchell, uh, the drug growers go deeper into the rainforest and uh, decimate this rainforest uh, to plant new crops. Of course, so this this fragile ecosystem that is so rapidly vanishing uh, in so many parts of the world that God we yes. need to to uh, maintain our ozone layer and our oxygen supply is being destroyed as drugs are grown, defoliants are sprayed, and they go deeper and deeper into the rainforest. And so who's profiting? Well, uh, that's that's a good question. You know, follow the follow the dollars. Who's right. who's profiting? Uh, certainly, the chemical companies. Certainly, the uh, people who make the airplanes and that uh, exactly. drop the chemicals. Certainly, a lot of people that uh, you wouldn't think of are profiting from this multi-billion-dollar industry called the war on drugs. It's been waged now for 20 years, and uh, and now what is the nature of the drug trade relative to what it was 20 years ago? Go. There's more coca production in Colombia, and there's more drugs than there was 20 years ago. So, uh, so it doesn't seem like a winning, a, a winnable <laughs> war. Number one, it's not a winning formula, right? And uh, you think of the cost to human life, and it's incredible. Right now, there's approximately two million uh, people who are displaced as a result of the war on drugs in Colombia. In Colombia alone. Alone, in addition to uh, the hundreds of thousands of people who have a high level of toxicity in their bodies as a result of this spraying. So it's a very big problem, and with our medium, Radio for Peace International, uh, our, we have a new project where we're going to be broadcasting 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, into the country right. of Colombia uh, right. in Spanish to inform people about how they can access various programs to get clean water, how they can develop grassroots efforts to stop this uh, terrible rape of their country and uh, we will repeat uh, in addition to other human service and talking about the the actual war war uh, yes. which is being being fought the Civil War uh, we'll be providing that type of information but but really more so we'll be talking about how to develop grassroots uh, efforts to stop this defoliation, which is going to ultimately cause many, many cases of cancer, and who knows what, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but I know that if the children have skin lesions and boils on their bodies, uh, that's only a symptom of something worse that's going on inside. Oh, God, yes. So. So what you have is the decimation of the indigenous culture, mm -hmm. which seems like it's been on the agenda of corporations and governments for a long time. Right. So that's, uh, you know, for them, an excellent byproduct. Mm -hmm. And of course, the destruction of peasants and uh, just greater control among themselves. Sure. You would be able to come to the resolute conclusion, Gil, it seems to me, in listening to you talk about this, that 
these problems from a business point of view are really very excellent opportunities for making more scads and scads of money mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they have a sure. remedy for every single part of, of the course, problem. Of course. First they create the problem right. and then they remedy it with the defoliants, et cetera, because it will eradicate that. And then when people get sure. sick, that's great because we have the drugs in order to right. fix that. Of course. So it's really course. a very fine system. Sure, sure. You know, and, and from that point of view. Of course. And uh, uh, it seems like uh, the developed world, especially the United States, loves to have all kinds of experimental wars and uh, uh, programs of destruction in developing countries. And it always seems that the indigenous populations and the poor populations are the victims of these types of activities. Siempre. Exactly. Always, exactly. always the case. Exactly. Now, in our remaining minutes, Gil, I wish you would address another key feature of something that has been aired on RFPI for the past several years, largely under the research and direction of James Latham, okay. the other co-founder of RFPI. James. And that has to do with hate radio. Yep. Very, very important. Uh, subject and it's been an area of immense proliferation mm -hmm. and RFPI has been a world leader in blowing the whistle on this proliferation. Mm -hmm. Could you address that? Surely. Uh, James uh, Latham is probably the world's foremost authority on the far right on uh, radio. And uh, when I talk about far right, I'm talking about very directed anti-Semitic homophobic uh, messages that are delivered through such people as the uh, American Nazi movement, the white supremacist mu movement. Anti all people of all color. All people of color. And, and everyone uh, has color. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, darn. Well, <laughs> but uh, uh, what we do is we monitor on the shortwave as well as AM and FM. Uh, we have various people monitoring and we uh, identify who the people are that are spreading this hateful rhetoric. And uh, we take down quotes and uh, journal quotes and times. Uh, we've just actually formed an alliance with the Southern Poverty Law Center in Montgomery, Alabama. Mm, and uh, James excellent. Latham is going to be publishing two articles in the next two issues of their publication, publication mm -hmm. which uh, talks about this issue. Uh, it's a it's a very big issue, and it's uh, uh, and it's uh, very very dangerous in the United States, especially because this hateful rhetoric is broadcast to the entire world on shortwave from transmitters in the United States. And what is the size, the quantity? Do you have any idea? of what the proliferation has been well, in the past five it, or ten years? In, in uh, ten years ago, there was five hours per week of hate-related broadcasting on radio. Currently, there's 200 hours a week. So it's, it's increasing it's uh, in a phenomenal uh, rate, at a phenomenal rate. And also, there's 20 transmitters in the United States now that are broadcasting this type of material. You take the power of those 20, 20 transmitters and from the United States is being broadcast a stronger signal in the English and German languages of hate-related uh, broadcasting than the Voice of America. So it's, it's enormous. Time to act. Yeah. Gil, I want to just thank you so much for being well, a guest on the show. Thank you, Mitchell. I'm so know. glad that uh, we had this opportunity to talk and, and to uh, share this with your listeners, your viewers. Thank you. Absolutely. I want to thank you, James, Deborah, Joe, the entire staff of incredibly committed people to using radio waves, short wave, responsibly and helping to create a better world. Thank you. I'm truly in your debt and really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. I love being part of it. Thank you. Absolutely. This is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. Thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. <laughs>